Yeah. Hey, Black Rain. Hey, Black Rain. Uh, lean, lean, that stick don't stop. Black Rain, skill time, cause the gun won't pop. Mass paint, stop once and your man gon' stop. Black Rain, stop twice and they all gon' flop. Tryna play for a dub, but I don't even need it. You catch on me 50, you sound conceited. I still done so bad that he think that I cheated. You said you was pro when I win, you deleted. My diamonds, they rain on me, I'm undefeated. The top of 100, I don't even read it. My rank, you won't beat it, don't make me repeat it. RGA, the squad, man, don't get them boys eat it. All right, so this right here, this right here is supposed to be a $100 money game. But like I told you guys, I don't do money games anymore. So he was like, yo, let's play for 100 I was like, you know, I ain't really feeling that, you know. Like, so um, I was already searching for a game. I was about to join the game. I was like, you know what, I'll just play. You know, what's your game tag? We'll just play, you know. So, you know, this right here, and we we, we um decided no Chiefs, no Bucks, no Green Bay. You know, so we... You know, Seattle and Philly, which Philly happens to be the fastest receiving court on the game. So he comes out right here under center. You know, he comes out here under center and, you know, we get good run defense. But let me finish my story, you know. So this is story time, man. This is Tuesday Talks. So I ended my story by telling you guys how I got kicked out of App State and how I was going to Youngstown State. Now, I get to Youngstown State. This is my red shirt freshman year. Um, I get to practice. They gave me this big number 57. And I'm like, I, I, what am I supposed to do with that? So then, you know, a few days go by. They're like, okay, this guy's legit, you know. So they give me 13. I'm cool with that. So I'm playing outside linebacker. I'm playing a little safety. I'm playing a little nickelback. I'm doing kick return and pump return, you know, because I was an athlete at Youngstown at, in high school. I was an athlete in high school, and I was an athlete at App State. So, what's crazy is I hadn't played a game since, you know, high school. I hadn't played a game since high school. Missed the whole season. So, I get to App State. I mean, I get to Youngstown State. And for some reason, like, they don't deal with fitness. So, you can't enroll into Youngstown State with a felony. So, I had three pending felonies on my record from App State. But I'm telling them, like, listen. I already talked to my lawyer. It's already basically down to a misdemeanor. Like, it's just going to be, you know, I'm not going to have any felonies. Well, I could not get my court case cleared before, you know, the season started. So, Youngstown State suspended me for the season. Now, it's crazy because week two of the season, my cases got uh, handled. I ended up having literally nothing on my record. I went from having three felonies to not even having misdemeanors on my record. You know, they dropped a bunch of stuff. You know, they said if I went and took this drinking class, I, uh, I had like like community service and AA meetings. If I complete, if I completed that, then nothing be on my record. So I'm sitting here week two, suspended for the whole season with nothing on my record. So I sit out two whole years. I took that time at, at Youngstown State and I really just built myself up again. You know, I just, I played you know, my whole career, high school, then I get to college, and I'm out of football for two whole years. So, you know, we go into, whoa, 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 whoa. We go into my redshirt sophomore year, and I'm sitting behind this senior. Now, he's already looking at people, you know, going to the league and whatnot, and da, 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 da. Guy's pretty good, but we have a new coaching staff in here. So we get Bo Pelini in here, you know, and he changes up a few things, you know. So, um, luckily for me, the senior in front of me ended up getting into some trouble right before the season start. So, my very first game of my, you know, legit college career, I'm playing against Pittsburgh with James Conner, um, Tyler Boyd, uh, what, was that Nate Peterson or something? I don't think, did I play against Nate Peterson? I'm not sure. But I know it was James Conner and Tyler Boyd, but Tyler Boyd was suspended or something he had done. I forgot what he was spending for, but he was spending. But we're playing against James Conner. So we go out there, I ball out. You know, first time on the field, I'm talking, I'm, I'm in the biggest, you know, I'm in the Pittsburgh Steelers stadium. I'm in the Steelers stadium. I'm playing against James Conner. I end up having like 13 tackles that game, uh, fumble recovery, and I think like three tackles for loss. We end up losing 38 to 45. So this is little young South State playing against Pittsburgh. You know, we ended up losing by seven. They ran the, run the kick return back right before half. 
and just messed up a lot of things. But that was the game right there that James, we hurt, we actually hurt James Conner that game. There's nothing to brag about, but I'm just saying. And that's when uh, Quandre Allerson, Quandre Allerson, I think that's when he came in for him. Uh, that same year they had that guy, uh, what's his name? He was in the slot. Uh, Quadre, I don't know his name, but he was he was good. He was he was real good. They had him as well. So they had a you had a, they had a decent team. But we lost right there. You know, season going. So the second game, the senior in front of me, he's back. You know, he's back, and they start him. You know, and we end up going to overtime with a team that we should have beat bad. And it was basically the, they were just driving on our defense. They get down there and miss the field goal. Driving on our defense again, we go down there and miss the field goal again. So we probably should have lost that game. You know, so coach was fed up about that. He was like, you know what? I'm starting, you know, I'm starting Rain and I'm starting Armand Delevade, who is a true freshman. So these are our first times out there on the field, period. And they got us starting. So long story short, let's go past the season. Um, I get all conference linebacker. Um, I don't know if you know the conference. It's uh, Missouri Valley, which is uh, Missouri Valley is the SEC of D1 AA football. You know, you got us, you got Youngstown State, you got North Dakota State, you got South Dakota State, you got South Dakota, you got Illinois State. You know, all top five teams that make it to the playoffs every year. So we have they have a big playoff system. You know, like a six, I think a sixteen team, sixteen team playoffs. You know, and that goes to see who wins the national championship. But, yo, I had like 78 tackles that year, um, five or six sacks, 12 or 13 tackles for loss, like two or three forced fumbles. Had a great year, you know. I get into my junior year, you know, junior year comes, and this is when I get in trouble. You know, this is when I get in trouble. So, I'm going to tell you the story. This is the story. We're going to this house party, right? And in Youngstown, Youngstown, if you look up Youngstown, it is a very bad community, all run down, everything. The college campus is literally in the hood. So Youngstown, have they have sides, north side, south side, east, west, you know, literally like that. So the stadium's on the north side. So I lived on the north side, like literally right beside the stadium. I did not live on campus. I live. And then everybody from Youngstown State commutes. Everybody commutes. So like there's only two dorms on the whole campus. So to come to... You know, that when I was there, it was two dorms. I think there's like apartment complexes they build up around there now. But everybody lived like scattered out and you just have to drive to campus every day and then you go home, drive to campus, go home. And like Youngstown State or Youngstown period is the hood. So you gotta be like on your P's and Q's at all times. You gotta like, there's people getting robbed all around you. The, the house I lived in, I literally watched out my window a shootout at nighttime. Somebody pulled him out of his truck Start shooting, do, do, do. Got back in his truck, pull it off. And I'm just like, what? So I go from App State, I go from home to violence just like that. To App State, you know, in App State, there ain't no violence like that, you know, but we made it to where, like, we still have fun. Then I go to Youngstown where there's legit violence. My first weekend down there in Youngstown State, there's a club called Nine. Nine's not there no more. But I literally see this drop, like this car come by. This dude shoot the whole car up downtown Youngstown, shoot the whole car up. The car just rolling. The dude's dead inside the car. Just got, I'm, I, I sat and watched it. I'm like, what have I gotten myself into coming up here? You know, but I stayed to myself a lot of times or whatnot. So, you know, I rarely got in trouble. But when I did, I did. So we're going to this house party one night. And we're looking for it. Like I say, Youngstown's the hood. So we pull up on these guys that like, there's cars parked out there. So we think this is the house party. So we pull up. We hop out of our car. I have my gun on me, obviously, you know. But we get out of the car and like four or five dudes roll up on the car with like, with their shirts up like, I'm like, oh, 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 we just looking for the house party. They was like, oh yeah, it's down the street right there. We're like, all right, for sure. Like, we, we, we no problem or nothing. So, I, so me and my homeboy, it's me and my homeboy Cash. And we, I'm just like, yo, like what is going on? Like we just about got robbed and shot and killed trying to find a house party. So we go to the house party, right? And this is, like I said, this is Youngstown. Everybody has their gun in the house party. I have my gun in the house party. You know, everybody has their gun. You know, we leave in the house party, shots get shot. You know, people from a certain area didn't like a certain couple of people. Shots start getting shot and all in the air. Do, 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 do. You know, so, you know, everybody's scattering like roaches. Literally scattering like roaches. Um, we get in the car, we pull off. 
and my homeboy's like, let me shoot your gun. So me, like at this point in time, me and my homeboy is shooting my gun out the window of the car. You know, just shooting a gun out the window of the car. Cool, we get downtown, you know, that's where we leaving, that's part of going downtown. We go downtown, having a good time, man, just chilling. You know, just chilling, we leaving. Cool, we go home, he like, yo, let me shoot your gun again. I'm like, all right. So we're literally like on campus, like we're passing through campus, so at this point in time, we're literally on campus. He shoot the gun out the window, I think once or twice, dude, dude. We're pulling into my apartment, apartment complex at this time. Police comes right behind me. Now, mind it's two, three in the morning. We're like the only car on the road, you know? So, police pulled us over, like, yo, did you hear those gunshots? Like, yeah, we heard it, but, you know, that was about it. Was it you guys? No, it wasn't us. For some, Somehow, he was like, yo, let me search the car or whatnot. Get out the car, let me search it. I don't know if he had probable cause or whatnot, but, you know, at that time, we wouldn't really, we didn't really know. So, we got out the car, he searched the car, found the gun, said who was shooting. My homeboy took the blame for it. Yo, it was me. So they took him to jail that night. That was like on a Friday night. Let me see. Monday come. Monday come. Um, I had a warrant out for my arrest. So I go to, I go, I turn myself in. So I, I got woke up out of my sleep, yo. You know, you got a warrant for your arrest because the situation happened. Cool. So I go in, you know, I'm in jail for three days. You know, wow, this is, I think this is the summer. This is the summer. So we're supposed to be doing football training, football practice stuff. I'm not even, I'm not able to practice or train or nothing. I'm in jail for three days, you know. So um, I get out, you know, so you can only, uh, arraignments are on Mondays and Wednesdays, you know. So I could, I, I got there after arraignments on Monday. So I had to be there for like two or three days. I got out Wednesday night, you know, I'm, I'm back on the team or whatnot. But now I got to deal with the school board, you know. So this is how the school board works. Regardless of, you know, what you get charged with or what not happened, they're going to sanction you before your court date. So let's just say, let's just say, boom, they say you was involved in an armed robbery on campus. You robbed somebody out of the dorms. They're going to send you to the school board. The school board is going to sanction you and they're going to sanction you even harder because you're an athlete. You know, if it was a regular, regular Joe Blow, you know, they might give them probation or something, you know. But you, because it's you, you're kicked off the team, might be kicked out of school, you know. But then let's say you go to court the next week and you beat your case, they find out it wasn't you at all, you had nothing to do with it, it wasn't you. Well, guess what? You're still kicked out of school, you're still kicked off the team. That's how they do it. Once they sanction you, that's it. You can try to appeal it, but there's like a certain amount of days you gotta wait until you appeal it. That's what kind of happened at App State. I got in trouble, they kicked me off the team, by the time I tried to put it, I was already kicked out of school. And by that time I was like, listen, you know, I'm, I'm already kicked out. I'm also, you know, try to find somewhere to go to school. Now I'm, I'm not gonna wait around here because what if I don't get back in? What I can get in at somewhere else, you know? So anyway, so I go to school board. They suspend me from the team. You know, I'm done from the city. You can stay in school. You know, you can go to classes, but you're off the football team, which makes no sense to me. Like what? It wasn't nothing that had to do with football, period. But because I'm a football player, I can still be in your school, but I can't be on the football team. I can go to practice, I can participate in all practices, weightlifting, all that, but I can't participate in any games. So I'm sitting here thinking to myself, like, what does what we did or anything have to do with football? So Cash, they suspended him from the school and suspended him from football. And so he had to, he took that semester off or took that year off. But I'm just wondering like, why do I have to, so I, the reason I got in trouble was because it was my gun. So they charged me with improper handling of a firearm in a motor vehicle. Because it was my gun, I'm responsible, you know? And I, I wasn't complaining about none of that, but I was just curious as to like, out of all things that can be done, like probation, um, you know, I had to take a gun safety class, you know, pfft, Passed that with flunkers. I had my CD. I had my uh, CCWs though. I had my concealed carry. But since um, you know he he had control of my gun at the time, they charged me with improper handling of a firearm in a motor vehicle. You know, go to court, beat that case. You know they beat that case. They gave me a mis it was a felony. 
they give me a misdemeanor, cool, you know. Wasn't worried about it, but so now I play my sophomore season. So I sit up my red shirt freshman year. I sit up my freshman year. I play my sophomore season, all conference. Great year. Now I'm sitting out my whole junior season. So season go by, the team is going great. You know, team's doing great. Uh, we slip into the playoffs. We slip into the playoffs. We're like the, like we're not even ranked. We're like the, might be like the last seed that made it into the playoffs or whatnot. So, um, we ended up going to the school board again. Like, yo, we want to appeal it again or whatnot. And they pushed me through. So they said, you can play for the playoffs. So we're hyped. We're like, yep, like, like, we were like, technically the season's over with. Technically the season's over with, but this is the playoffs. And I'm thinking to myself, like, are y'all crazy? Like the season's still going. But I was grateful that they let me play. So, you know, um, my first, so I've been practicing the whole season, giving the offense trouble. You know, I was a scout defense the whole season, you know, so. The first game came back. I did not start on defense. Uh, who was it versus? Who was it versus? Who was it versus? I can't think. Who it was I know the color in my. It was the bull. Some kind of bulldogs, but I can see the color in my mind. I can't think of the team. But um, so I didn't start on defense. I started on all special teams just to get the feel back of it. I played like a few snaps on defense when food was up pretty big. You know, that game's over. With. Cool. Next next week against um, Jacksonville State. Jacksonville State was the runner-up in the national championship the year before. They got this guy, quarterback named Eli Jenkins. Look him up. Eli Jenkins ended up going to the Chargers, I believe, to play receiver or something. But we're playing against Eli Jenkins in my first game back, my first start, really. I end, we end up winning that game. I made a, a bunch of key plays. I didn't play as much as I wanted to because of certain packages that we were having at that time that I was not aware of. You know, so I they didn't put me in at that time. But I ended up having like 13 tackles. I was player of the game on defense. Um, I think I had like two tackles for loss or something. We had a post-game interview. If you go look it up right now, Jack Lee Wright, Jacksonville State post-game interview. Uh, it was me, Coach Bo Pelini, and Jody Webb up there on the podium. And they'll tell you, so Lee, the first game back, you had the first two tackles of the game. How'd you feel? And I simply said, I just needed those two tackles to get back into the, the the rhythm and the flow of the game. I got those, and I felt comfortable, you know. So the next week playoffs, we uh we play against Wofford. Wofford runs, runs the wing T. They runs all this, you know, motion him, motion him, and we end up we supposed to lose that game. We supposed to lose that game. We end up going to overtime. They missed the field goal to. We had somebody block the field goal to go into you know overtime. Then they ended up fumbling. They, you know, did a lot of pitches and stuff. They ended up fumbling the pitch. And then we ended up kicking the game winning field goal to win the game. You know, so supposed to lose that game. The next week, what I have, I think I'm only had like four or five tackles that game because I was playing outside the box instead of inside the box. Um, the next week, we go to Eastern Washington. This is where uh, Kendrick Bourne is. This is where uh, Cooper Cup is. And they have the number one passing offense in the nation. You know, the quarterback, I can't remember who, who the quarterback was, but he's throwing the air out of the ball at this point. You know, so we go up there. I think, don't quote me on this, but I want you guys to go and look this up. I think it was the third coldest game, third or fifth coldest game in college history. I mean, it was, it was a sleet of ice on, so they got a red field. Eastern Washington's field is red. It's called the Inferno. They got a sleet of ice on the field. I see, I'm out here with like long sleeves and uh, face mask on. Cooper Cup comes out, no sleeves on his arms, no sleeves on his legs with gloves on. I, I wanna say he didn't even have gloves on to be honest, but I think he had gloves on. I, I ain't exactly sure. He's out here catching the ball with one hand. Bloop, 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 going out of bounds, bloop. By halftime, Cooper Cup has 10 catches for like 200 yards and two touchdowns, I think. And you know what's crazy? I'm 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 guarding. I'm guarding. So so he plays in the slot. So we was playing bracket on Cooper Cup. He's like the inside guy. I was this linebacker. We had a guy outside him. Me and this guy are doubling Cooper Cup. So if he run a vertical, I should be inside. He should be outside of it. 
and playing it. If he runs in route, I should be on it. If he runs outside route, he should be on it. He ran a lot of, I ain't gonna lie to you, he ran a lot of outside routes. So, you know, once he turned outside, that's not my man no more. He goes outside, now I gotta get eyes back on the quarterback and see if anything else to come back in the middle. Now, if he runs in route, you know, I got him. You know, now he's looking outside to see if anything outside is coming back inside, you know. But what he ran on me that made me remember this, he looked at the quarterback, tapped his helmet. I said, DJ, we got Cooper. He said, yeah, we got him. He said, hi. He ran straight down the field, straight. Didn't look back for the ball or nothing, straight down the field. You know, I'm kind of like on his low hip in case, you know, he runs a comeback or he runs an in route, you know, a dig or something. I'm on his low hip. DJ's on his low hip as well. You know, he runs a simple go route. As soon as he look up, bloop, catch the ball. I said, ain't no way. I ain't never seen nothing like this a day in my life. You know, so we ended up beating them on the very last second catch of the game. Very last play of the game. They threw it. Our tight end caught the ball on the guy's back, on Cooper Cup's brother's back. Threw it. He's face guarding like this. He wrapped around him, caught the ball. The dude's body is here. He caught the ball on his back, go down to the ground, touchdown. We're going to the national championship. Go to the national championship versus, uh, what's that? I, see, I, I can't remember back in the day. I, 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 I can see the color of the team. I, I don't know. We go to the national championship, we get beat 21, 28 to 14. I think it was 28 to 7. Then we end up scoring late to make it 28 to 14. Uh, national championship field was trash. We played in El Paso, I think it was El Paso, Texas. But we played in Texas somewhere. And let me tell you this, it snowed in Texas while we was there. It literally, for the first time in so long, it snowed in Texas. The field was trash. The field was hard. Like the grass, there was this much grass on it and the bottom was dirt. It was like a baseball field's outfield. The national championship was the baseball field's outfield, but like, it had frozen, the layer of dirt had frozen, so it was like, just bad. So after the season, you know, we lost after the season. Uh, my senior year comes around. You know, I had a pretty great senior year as well. Like, I can't remember my stats. Great senior season. I'm talking about a great senior season. I'm gonna post my college highlights soon. I posted my high school running back. I posted my high school defense. I have not posted my college, high school, my college highlights yet. I'm gonna post those soon so you guys can see. You, know, you might can look it up, but they're not going to be like my full highlights, you know. So, I'm going to post those soon. But, um, so, my senior year, I dealt with a lot of nagging injuries. Like, a lot of nagging injuries. I had a bad knee, bad ankle, terrible shoulder. To the point where, like, you know, I was barely making it through each game. I mean, I was playing. I was playing great. Had a wonderful season, you know. But I just, you know, didn't have the season I really wanted. Then after season... You know, I did a lot of uh, treatment and whatnot, getting my body together. Got my body to about 85% where I wanted it at. My bench press was not where I wanted it at. I was used to doing 28 on the bench press. 225, 28 times. Look at this right here. Look at this right here. I should have declined this penalty, but I accepted it. Just because I was being smart. I was being a, a, I was just being, you know, wasn't a money game or nothing. But as you can see right here, I accepted the penalty. But, um... I'm used to doing 28 on the bench press. I get to, like, I'm broken on the combine or whatnot. I only do it 20 times. So that was not good enough for me. It wasn't. 20 is good, you know. But when you're used to doing it 28 times consistently, like, I can go into any given day and do 28, 225, 28 times, which is amazing, which is a lot of people can't do, considering my size and my height and my weight and all that stuff. That was, like, out of this world. 20 was still good. It was, like, 20 is, okay, that's impressive, you know. 28 is like, just what in the world is going on? But I was doing the 20, then my shoulder was nagging. Me. I was like, you know what? I'm just not, this is not what I want to, you know, I don't want to go in there if I ain't doing my best. So I started working on like, you know, footwork drills. I'm like, you know, I won't do the bench press. I'll just do the 40 yard dash. I'll do the cone drills. I'll do, you know, all the running stuff. And then I'll do the catching the bag, you know, flipping hips and whatnot. I'm like, cool, I can do all that. Start working on that. Ankle start giving me problems. Knees start giving me problems. And I was just like, you know what? I'm not even motivated to do this anymore. You know, if I can't go out there and be my 100% best, I don't want to go out there, you know, because if I go out there and I'm not my best and I don't make it, I'm going to feel bad about myself. Like, man, you just went out there, not even your best, 
and you didn't even show them you could you couldn't even show them your best for them to even see if they wanted to take you or not so i said you know what i'm not doing it when the pro day came i was down in miami with mike williams partying can't even lie to you i went to no 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 i went to myrtle beach for five days on vacation, I just said, you know what? I'm going to Myrtle Beach. You know, forget all this pro day stuff. I went down to Myrtle with my guys, party. I actually drove down. My car broke down while I was down there. Uh, I got my oil changed right before I drove down, and they forgot to put my oil filter on back on my car. So my I, my I blew my motor when I was in Myrtle. Couldn't get back up to Ohio to to really do anything I wanted to anyway. So I said, you know what? I hit Mike, I'm like, yo, where you at? He was like, Myrtle. I caught a flight to Miami from Myrtle for like a week, partied, had fun. Guys coming back showing me, hey, you know, pro day went cool, you know? Then I had a couple coaches calling me, like, yo, where were you, what happened? Uh, I heard some, you know, the Browns were there for you, the Steelers were there for you. Now that's not really too impressive for me because the Browns is an hour away and Steelers is an hour and a half away. So what, they, what these teams like to do is get players close for like a scout or whatnot, you know, just to come to fill up spots, you know, practice teams or whatnot, and then soon as the season start, they like to cut you. So I already knew that, you know, we had a couple of players to go to the Browns and the Steelers, and they end up getting cut and released right before the season started. And I was like, you know, that's just not something I'm interested in. So, you know, I had a, I talked to the Browns, I talked to the Steelers, that yeah, we would like to have you come for the camp and whatnot. And I just honestly told them like, I'm not 100%, you know, I just, I would not feel comfortable even coming out there while I'm not 100%. That's just not the type of person I am, you know. So that's where that went, you know. I came back from Miami to Myrtle, uh, got my car fixed. They put me a brand new motor in because I had a warranty on my car. You know, they put my oil filter on this time. Drove back to South Carolina, hollered at my, my parent or my mom. Then I drove back to Ohio. And yeah, that was the end of my college career. So I stayed in Youngstown for a year. Uh, I started working at this factory or whatnot, just to see, you know, what I wanted to do, didn't really like it or whatnot. So after that, uh, I had a teammate that was actually from Orlando, Florida. I was like, yo, bro, I'm down here selling health insurance. I am doing great right now. He showed me some paychecks. He was doing great, you know. So I came down to Orlando, Florida to sell health insurance. I actually did great with that. I did, whew, I did numbers with that, like pretty impressive. But, you know, I just got tired of dealing with people. You know, every single day I got to deal with three and 400 people, texting three, 400 people. Just, excuse me, just wasn't passionate about selling health insurance. So I come to Tampa, Florida. Like I guess I'm still selling health insurance though. But this is when I got into YouTube. So I'm playing Madden, right? I'm playing Madden, and I'm noticing that I'm climbing up the leaderboard. And it wasn't nothing that I really wanted to grind. Through. Okay, I'm gonna just grind Madden, be the best bad Madden player in the world. I'm just playing Madden, and I'm seeing that how impressive I am. I'm seeing that my record's good, and it and a lot of people were ranked ahead of me because of how many games they played. Now I climbed up because of my record, and you know I was winning way more games than I was losing. You know, so at one point, I think I was like, I started off Madden 52 and 37. And then that's when I got into it. And then all of a sudden, I'm 337. Now I'm ranked number five in the world. And people are like, yo, who's this Black Rain guy? He's never been on the red leaderboards. Then before you know it, I'm number one. And I'm getting a lot of messages like, yo, bro, you should stream. You should stream. You should stream. And I'm like, what is streaming? What is Twitch? What is this? I've never done this. I've never even looked into this stuff. Then one day, I get a message from TD Bear like, yo, bro. Uh, I checked you out. I see you number one in the world. I'd like to play you. You know, so I played TD Bear. TD Bear actually messaged me first. I played TD. TD's like, yeah, I beat TD when we played. He's like, yo, bro, you should start streaming. I started streaming. Uh, TD's like, yo, you have a great personality. You should get into YouTube. I got into YouTube simply because I cannot sit there in front of the game for eight hours at a time. That's just not me. I don't, like I say, I don't have a passion for Madden. I'm not very passionate about Madden. I just happened to be good at Madden. So now I create content and the content I create happens to be Madden. You know, so that's kind of what happened with the Madden stuff, man. You know, that it, it wasn't like 
I just flipped a switch in my head one day and was like, yo, I'm about to be the best Madden player in the world. And can't nobody tell me that. I'm going to be the number one Reds player in the world. It never happened like that. That was never the thought process. The thought process was, this is my hobby, playing Madden, you know. When I'm done chilling with my dogs and hanging out with my friends, I come home and play a little Madden. I ain't, I, I'm just good at Madden. Then, before you know it, I'm number one on the leaderboards. You know, and now I'm doing YouTube and I'm doing Madden content. And now, instead of me being competitive about it or whatnot, I'm so competitive about it, but instead of me trying to go and compete nationally, I teach within, you know, my organization, which is my organization is YouTube. You know, so what I want to do next Tuesday talk is get into how I really feel about Madden and how I feel about the competitive scene and all of that. So that's what I want to do in the next Tuesday talk. Um... Because I, I feel like some people got a different perspective of how they view me and whatnot. So I've basically broken down high school. I've broken down App State. I've broken down Youngstown State. Now I want to get into how I feel about Madden now as a whole. Because, like I say, people got the wrong perspective of Black Rain. You know, they just got the, the very wrong. Then some people understand where I'm coming from. You know, but I want to express how I'm, you know, where I'm coming from. So as you can see right here, this game is basically over. You know, I, if you was watching this game and paying attention to it, I put on a dominant performance. Very impressive performance. But that right there was a GG. I hope you guys stick around for Tuesday talk next Tuesday. You did. Thank you guys for watching the video. Catch you next time. Peace. All right, let's do this. For daily sticky uploads, follow me at YT Black Rain 4 on TikTok. For hoodies and t-shirts, click the link down below in the description. Black Rain's bin. That's where you get all your gear at. For funny stories and motivational stories, follow me on Snapchat at Black Rain 4. And for the latest news on everything, follow me on Instagram at Black Rain 4. And last but not least, if you want to play anybody in Rain Gang, look down below in the description. All the information is down there that you need. You dig? You dig?